Hello everybody. This is going to be on more so news as opposed to a Bible study, but it's important. The, um, the United States basically invented computers and the internet. A lot of people don't know it, but in the internet eventually, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, started as a project for the military to share information. And eventually it grew and grew and uh, became a civilian thing for information, as all of you probably know. Now, a lot of people don't know it. I, uh, in the 80s, in the late 80s, I had a Commodore VIC-20 computer, and I was on the Internet. Of course, back then it was all games. That's basically what it was. For those of you that remember the Atari and Pong and all that stuff, it was similar to that. And uh, I didn't spend a lot of time doing it, but I knew that was the future. So I was playing with that then. And besides, I was a computer science major in the 80s in college. So I wanted to keep abreast of things. Uh, back then, Windows was like version 1.2 or something like that. So we, you know, it was actually DOS commands that had these long strings of words, sentences, and periods of what you wanted to do. And if you wanted to copy something from the computer to a disk, you would take that location and copy, and then this, that, and the other, and then disk, and then blah, 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 and then hit enter, and then it would copy it to the disk. Well, now Windows, all you do is just click a couple of buttons, and, you know, it does it. Um, it was very tedious and time-consuming, but it was the infancy of computers. Well, actually, computers go back to the um, to the, the 50s. Uh, you could argue mechanical computers went before that, but the electronic computers basically came into being when um, I think it was AT&T or Western Electric or somebody invented the electronic transistor. It eventually replaced the tubes. I actually remember tube TVs. And, uh, and that's when they basically started, you know, with the computers and what have you. IBM was an office machine company, and they got into computers. And they're still around today, of course. But the Internet was so much for history, right? Um, the Internet was basically a United States creation, computers, the whole thing. I mean, let's face it. So when you wanted to start a website, let's say I wanted to start a website, which um, I did. I did start a number of websites. Some were for weddings and business, and others were for uh, ministry and stuff, what have you. So let's say I wanted to start a website, uh, chaplainbobwalker.org or .com or whatever, right? Com means commercial and ORG just means organization. So let's say chaplainbobwalker.org. I don't know if it exists, but I'm just using this as an example. And when you started a website, they had a thing called ICON. I-C-A-A-N, uh, I forget what it stands for, but you can look it up. But they were the people that uh, kept track of all the websites and who was in control of the websites. And you could have your address and a phone number and an email address. And, you know, it basically, um, you know, you could uh, Microsoft.com or IBM.com or GE.com or whatever, okay? Hewlett-Packard.com. You know, they just basically kept track of all the who was in charge, who owned and was in charge of all the email. I mean, I'm sorry, not email, but um, the website addresses. And then they would, when somebody would do a search on Google for that particular website address, it would point them to the location 
on the internet where it would be, you know, somebody's server, a computer, and, you know, if you look for IBM.com, it would every point everybody to a computer inside of IBM's complex that they had a computer that just was dedicated for the website. And, it, you know, you'd go there, what have you, look up all the information you wanted, right? Well, Icon was, uh, would keep track of all the web addresses, electronically, of course. But they got rid of, uh, the United States decided they gave up, they relinquished control of Icon. And they gave it to an international body or organization. And I'm not sure which one it is, but I believe it's something to do with the United Nations. Now, I understand that with the Patriot Act, since it was passed under Bush, basically the, the Bill of Rights and the Constitution means diddly squat. I mean, it's, it's just basically doesn't exist anymore. There are six court kosher companies that own almost all the media. I mean, they own the newspapers, the radio, the TV stations, the networks, uh, basically the whole shebang. Okay. And, uh, so, but, but on paper, at least in the bill of rights, you have the first amendment to the constitution which basically says you have freedom of speech, at least on paper anyways. So basically on my website, I can say, Jesus Christ said, Jesus who is the Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And on paper, at least, I have the freedom to do so. Another time, Jesus said, he that hath the Father hath life. No, I'm sorry. He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abideth upon him. So, I would have the freedom to do that. Being that the Internet was created in the United States and the Constitution, freedom of speech, and what have you. However, because... The United States has relinquished control. That means they quit. They're handing it to an international body, probably the United Nations. I'm not sure what. Uh, the news media doesn't really give you much information. Uh, they probably don't want people to know what's going on until after it happens so that there's no protests. You know, it's amazing. Um, how ignorant people are to what's going on. So they're probably going to hand the internet control over to this international organization. And guess what? Freedom of speech? Oh, well, that's only in the United States. That doesn't apply in the European Union or, you know, China. China's already censoring the internet big time. Can you imagine if China, China's one of the five most important members of the United Nations, the Security Council, it's Russia, China, the United States, England, and I think France. Those are the five founding, uh, the five, the big five, as I call them. Because the United Nations could do nothing if one of the big five vetoes the thing. So every time the United Nations was fighting a uh, communist country, and Russia or China, who are communist, said no, nothing would happen. And then the United States was on their own. But we don't fight communism anymore. Now we embrace it. Diversity. Well, all right, so they took the Internet, control of the Internet, and handed it to, I believe, the United Nations. So freedom of speech, out the window. It probably will not be long before my website, I mean, my YouTube stuff and my, uh, well, not just me, every, all the true people that fight for the truth of the Bible, they'll be, they'll be booted off. 
they'll either kick them off the websites completely or they will just make it so that you can't find them anymore. I had a website where I was witnessing to uh, goths and Google completely removed the listing for a couple of months. I mean completely removed the listing. I could type in the exact web address and it wouldn't come up. I'm, I mean, ex the typed in the exact web address and it wouldn't come up in the listings. It's as if the website did not exist. And of course, I would look uh, at the statistics for my website, you know, how many visitors? Zero for weeks. And a couple months prior, I was getting, oh, I don't know, uh, hundreds and, and hundreds of web uh, hits a day. So, you know, it's, uh, they can, uh, they can claim that, uh, the words of Jesus are hate speech. After all, in John 8, 44, when Jesus was talking to a group of people that hang out in the synagogues, he told them that they were of their father, the devil. And when you read in the Jewish encyclopedia, they say that's the most anti-Semitic statement in the Bible. Well, if it's anti-Semitic, anti-Semitism, that's hate speech, isn't it? Well, you know, if we're going by international standards and not United States standards, freedom of speech, well, it needs to be banned. It's hate speech, right? If you quote Leviticus where it says sodomites should be put to death, well, that's hate speech. After all, you know, that's promoting hatred and and violence against a protected group. Um, so I had a website. I'm sorry. I had a, a something on YouTube. It was the um, the Christian Holocaust. One of my videos. It had only been up about four hours. And I got a love note from YouTube that this has been flagged as hate speech. It's been banned in Europe, the European Union. It was banned in Germany and Austria and France and England and this country and that country and all kinds of French colonies and uh, all over, you know, Europe. It just been banned. I mean, it had only been up for four hours. So, yes, I have people that follow me, not because they want to learn, but because they want to listen to what I'm saying and then use that against me. But I'm serious. It had been up for four hours and it was flagged and banned as hate speech. So it's going to be just a matter of time before I'm sure the Christian websites are going to be dropping like flies. Dead flies that got sprayed with uh, the bug spray that they're using on the Zika virus mosquitoes or whatever. Yeah, people, it's 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 getting real. So, you know, eventually when YouTube or whoever cancels my uh, channel, I mean, that's it. I'm, it's over. I would strongly suggest you get yourselves a King James Bible read it yourself, and uh, if anybody wants to copy any of my things and share them, there's no copyright on anything that I do. I will not make a claim against you. All glory to Jesus. Jesus said, freely ye have received, freely give. Um, I'm not going to sell you my latest book for 1995, and if you order now, you get a brief, a free prayer cloth from the rabbi in Israel. Praise of Yeshua Hamashiach or whatever. Nope, I don't do that. So um, I would strongly recommend that uh, you know they got website copiers, and well, not just website copiers, but audio copiers, video copiers. Uh, if you see something you like and you, you know, want to record it, by all means, if you want to share it, that's fine. I don't copyright nothing. I'm not going to make a claim. 
but uh, the truth is going to be banned very, very soon. So when the United States gave up control of the Internet, and trust me, and it was Obama that did it. Obama's the one. It's, uh, it's not going to be long. You know, nothing, nothing that Satan does in this world is for no good reason. I mean, the United States has had control of the Internet from the very beginning. There's no reason to change anything except for that pesky Internet's got to go because people are starting to wake up to what the wicked are up to. And, you know, when the wicked are doing things in darkness, they hate it when people shine a light. And Jesus is the light of the world, as I've said many times in John 8, 12. So the Satanists, the witches, uh, the wicked, the sodomites, they have to get rid of people like myself and others and what we're saying because they don't want a revival. They're afraid. You know, these people are afraid that one day there will be a revival because they know their lives are in danger. Trust me, Satanists know that there, if there were ever was a real Christian revival in this country, the sodomites too they know that their lives would be in danger and everybody's like oh well you know jesus just loved everybody and we got to be tolerant well you know what people let me tell you something the satanists and the sodomites are going to show you how tolerant they are when they when they com take complete control they're going to show the, the real christians just how tolerant they are it's called a guillotine they're going to cut their heads off. And uh, wait until the Noahide laws come. You don't want the Ten Commandments? No problem. God will let you have the Noahide laws. Check them out. N-O-A-H-I-D-E. And if you believe in Jesus, the people that found, did the Noahide laws say that Jesus is a false god. And people that worship false gods should be put to death by beheading. Oh, wait a minute. That's in the Bible somewhere, isn't it? Hmm, yeah, it's in the book of Revelation. Yeah, let's read that. Yeah, Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded. For the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And a lot of people that go to church don't believe this will ever apply to them, but they might be surprised one day. In Matthew 10, 33, Jesus said, But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. And there's going to be people that will deny Jesus just to keep their head. Believe me, it's going to happen. And if you deny Jesus, well won't be a good thing. Maybe Jesus will deny you. I don't know. So who's going to be doing all this killing? Well, here's a, a little hint. Turn to Matthew chapter 6, and the Messianic Jews, so-called, and the Hebrew Roots people will tell you that the book of Matthew is all wrong. It was originally in Hebrew, and then those satanic pagan Greeks, they mistranslated everything. So, you know, the book of Matthew, it's wrong, but, you know, this is what we got. 
Matthew 6, verse 2, Jesus speaking, Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, that's charity, therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. So there's these hypocrites in the synagogue, and what they would do is they would blow a trumpet, doo -doo -doo, and then when everybody's looking, they do their little act of charity. But they're not doing it to help the people. They're doing it, to, you know, that they may have the glory of men. And this is Jesus speaking, okay? How about Matthew chapter 6 and verse 5? And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Hmm. How about Matthew 23 and verse 34? Jesus speaking, Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets. Who's Jesus speaking to here? Who did he send the prophets to? Israel. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify. Wait a minute. Jesus says that the the you know, the, the Jews here are, are, are going to be doing, they're going to crucify them. Haven't you always been told in the church, oh, it was the Romans that did the crucifying. But it says, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify. And some of them ye sh shall ye scourge, which is beat, whip. And some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues. Do the Romans hang out in the synagogues? Uh, no. And some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. Hmm. All right, well, let's say Matthew is wrong, that it was originally in Hebrew and those terrible Greeks mistranslated. How about the book of Mark? Mark 13, verse 9. But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. Ah. Oh. All right, so... How about Luke 21 and verse 12, but, uh, Jesus? But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. Ah. How about John chapter 16 and verse 2? They shall put you out of the synagogues. That means they're going to kick you out. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God service. Oh, yeah. So, who's going to be doing the, the killing? Take three guesses. But it's people that hang out in the synagogues, right? According to Jesus, I mean, if you think what I'm preaching is anti-Semitism, well, I'm just telling you what Jesus said. But, oh, that's right. The Jewish Encyclopedia says that Jesus was the greatest anti-Semite that ever lived. But they don't call him Jesus. They call him Yeshu, Y-E-S-H-U. And then the Messianic Jews will come along and they'll put an A on the end of Yeshu. And Yeshu means cursed one. 
And then they put an A on the end of it and tell you, oh, well, that means Savior. Well, maybe it does, but I don't know. I don't know Hebrew that well. So what can I tell you? Yes, everybody, freedom of speech on the Internet is coming to an end. It's not going to be long before uh, probably the true believers are going to be booted off the net and uh, as hate speech or, or even, even if they don't kick our websites off the Internet, they'll just make it so we can't be found. I mean, you'll have a website up, but you'll have no visitors because Google or Bing or whatever, AOL or whatever, just won't have your website in their listing. I mean, let's face it. You got a library with a million books and you're looking for a certain book and the library doesn't tell you where the book is. Can you find it? Well, if you know the exact location, you could. So unless you know to look for the exact place where my website is, you know, chaplainbobwalker.com or whatever, you won't find my website. Won't happen. So it's, it's, it's coming, people. And I tell you what, there's a lot of things that the uh, wicked do not want the public to find out. I've known about the Talmud since the early 90s and the Kabbalah and I used to tell people about it and nobody believed me but I tell you what it's starting to become people are the people that aren't watching the stupid television and entertainment tonight and football and basketball and baseball and whatever the Olympics and whatever other filth and garbage is on people that do research, they're starting to find out. And the wicked just can't have that. They've got to cut it out. They've got to make sure people remain in the dark. You know, there's, there's a remnant, but they're scattered all over, all over. Like I say, I live in the third largest Kabbalah center of the United States. New York's first, Los Angeles is second, and South Florida's third. I'm not sure how long I'm going to stay here. I'm ready to retire. I just don't know how much longer the wicked are going to put up with the internet. You know, you'll have the illusion I mean, they're already doing this in China. You, you type in the word freedom in China and you'll, you, you, every, all, all, their Chinese search engine will point you to the Chinese Communist website, Chinese Communist Party website. There's your freedom. The Chinese Communist Party, the People's, Re the People's Party. But if you want to read about the United States Constitution where you have freedom of speech, don't look for that in the... Um, the Chinese uh, internet, they have their own search engine. And there's whole groups of websites that are banned. You're not allowed to look at them in China. And guess what? The United States is not that much different. Um, I went to work. I worked for a city. And I went to, uh, I tried to go to Tex Mars website, T-E-X-E-M-A-R-R-S. You know, he's a Christian patriot. He loves Jesus, and he loves the United States. He was a military officer in the Air Force. And I typed in his thing on the uh, Internet at Works, webs, uh, works, my computer at work, the website. Up pops a thing. This site is banned as hate speech it's hate speech the 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 city says that this is hate speech people that love the united states and patriots 
and love Jesus Christ, it's hate speech. You're not allowed to go to this website. If you think this is an error, please contact, please contact your internet administrator, your network administrator, and discuss the situation. But if you wanted to go to the North American Man Boy Love Association, NAMBLA, and where 45-year-old men think that they should be allowed to have sex with 12-year-old boys, there's a group that teaches this, okay? That site's not banned. No. You know, talk about Jesus, it's banned. Uh, if you're a 45-year-old man and you want to have sex with boys, 12-year-old boys, well, that's fine. That's not banned. That's not hate speech. And this is what the United States is coming to. So, what can I tell you? I never, never, ever thought I would see the United States come to this. The United States is under the curse of God. Stay close to Jesus, people. This is going to seem like Nothing compared to what is coming. Most Christians, well, I'm sorry, most church people, I don't know if they're Christians. God knows. I don't. Most of them don't act like Christians, but most church people, they have no idea what's coming. And the churches are not warning them. As a matter of fact, God's heavy-handed judgment is coming upon the United States. It's really sad that when I was in elementary school, first grade, we had prayer in Jesus' name and Bible reading and the Ten Commandments on the wall. And now... Instead of the Ten Commandments, we have the Ten Planks of the Communist Manifesto. And we have the most wicked, evil people on the Supreme Court, in the White House, and in the House of Congress. People that hate Christians, people that hate Jesus. Everything the Bible says to do they say the, they do the opposite. Everything the Bible says not to do, they do. And this is America. And then people, stupid people, put their little bumper stickers on their car and say, God bless America. God bless America for what? Sodomy? Abortions? Witchcraft? Freedom of religion to be a witch? Freedom of religion to be a Satanist and kidnap children and kill them and on an all, sacrifice them on an altar to Satan? That's what freedom of religion means to you? And you think God's going to bless this? And, and people say, I'm radical. No, I'm not radical. They're not even lukewarm. They're cold. You watch one day when their heads were, you know, when they, when they're, if there was a trial to convict people of being a Christian or not, would they be found guilty? Would you be found guilty? Would I be found guilty? Is there enough evidence to convict you of being a Christian? Think about that. And I'm serious, there's going to be a lot of people that, are, that will deny Jesus to save their head on their shoulder. There's going to be a lot of people that Jesus is going to say, I never knew you. Depart from me. Probably the scariest words that you could ever hear from the mouth of Jesus. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Um, in John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. 
Um, oh, people, I do have another website. So I've got a, uh, I've got another website. If you type in Chaplain Bob Walker, you'll see one website with 700 videos. Then you'll see another website with, I don't know, 15, 10, 12, 15 videos. That's my new website, the small one. And I've got links on my previous videos. It says new website, you know, new YouTube channel. So if you want to hear my latest stuff, check it out. All right, well, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Jesus, who is the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, all glory and honor to him. Amen.